Happiness is beautiful It's a kind of reality Happiness is the highest good Happiness is free So let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy Let's be so very happy Hi, and welcome to The Happiness Show. This is Lionel Ketchian, and I'm here with George Ortega. And you know why we're here. To talk about happiness. What else? Why? Because happiness is, always has been, and always going to be, as far as we're concerned, the point of it all. Today, we're going to be talking about practicing happiness. And I can't be more pleased or happy to be sharing this information with you, because I think it's something that's extremely important. If you don't practice something, uh, you don't know you have it. So it's, it's of absolute no value if you're not using it. You know, it's almost like a gift that you're given and never open, never use. And uh, that's why I think today's show is going to be very important. You might want to get your family and friends together or call them up to watch because practicing happiness has got to be one of the most important things about happiness. George, would you like to uh, tell us more about practicing happiness? Okay, yeah. The, the first thing is that, like, happiness is a skill. I mean, there's, for example, 20% of our American population that's very happy. They're about 85% happier, happier. And the average level is about 70%. Now, some of it is genetic, okay? About 50% is genetic. But the other part is that certain of us understand happiness and understand that it's a skill and certain of us understand that it's important to practice the various sub skills involved with it so so yeah i think the basic point is that um that we need to practice happiness because happiness is a skill and the more we practice like with any skill the better we'll get at it well okay we've determined as you're pointing out that happiness is a skill so um, basically, as a skill, its usefulness comes in how well you're able to use it. And again, like uh, I, I suppose with everything, the more practice that you get, uh, the better the skill becomes in you. And probably the more you appreciate having that skill, because without practice, you, you really, you know, you really don't have much of a skill. As somebody said uh, once to this, you know, world uh, famous pianist and. Uh, at uh, Carnegie Hall, they, they walked up to them at the end of a performance and said, you know, I would, I would give uh, my life to play like, like you did. And he said, well, I did. <laughs> and that's how much a skill could take. It could take your whole life. But the, the, the point is that <clears throat> you wouldn't give this effort if it didn't have value. And I think that's what makes this important. The more you practice happiness as a skill, the more effort you put behind it and into it, the more value you get out of it and the more it supports you because that's what the practice basically does. Yeah, and um, yeah, we're, we're gonna, yeah, the more we practice happiness, the better we're going to get at it. The easier it'll be to practice it, the more we'll enjoy pra practicing it. So it, it has, you know, it, it kind of spirals upward like that. But you know, also like the idea is that um, there are so many skills. There's like practicing piano. There's like writing. There's skills of being with other people, with friends. There's there's so many life life skills, work skills. Mm -hmm. But um, in terms of practicing happiness and seeing it as a skill, I think it's important to to, to really understand um, very clearly that happiness as a skill, I think, is the most important skill to practice. I mean, um, goodness is important, you know, because goodness affects the happiness of not just oneself, but those around us. But I mean, yeah, so if one wants to, let's say, practice the piano or practice playing tennis, sure, it's great, but I, but I hope that that person is really enjoying it and that, um, that whatever else we practice in life, we realize that everything we do in life is, is to be happy or become, hap or become happier, so that um, the top ha the top life skill really is practicing happiness well that's uh, <clears throat> it's interesting that you bring up for example tennis <clears throat> and what do people do that enjoy and practice tennis and play tennis they set aside some time don't they, they you know they maybe once a week or 
something of that. So one of the things to uh, uh, practicing happiness or playing, or getting better at playing at happiness, would be to set some time up uh, so that so that you could practice it. And uh, what do you suggest for for you know the time uh, uh, limits or or what's a good idea on on setting time uh, right. constructions? Yeah, because first, I mean, we've got to realize that whatever we do, whatever we do, whether we're f with friends, working, watching TV, listening to music, whatever we do, we're doing it for happiness. We're doing it to feel better either in the present or mm -hmm. both in the present and in the future. Or sometimes we sacrifice the present for the future, but you know, hopefully we do that as little as possible. So the idea is that like in our culture, in our civilization, like we might watch TV or like for example, watching TV is a perfect example because like someone has to go home and I think the average person watches TV about four hours a night. That's a lot of TV. Now, the studies show that the average mood for the, a person watching, let's say, the average sitcom is mildly depressed. So, so you know, a person spending four hours uh, watching TV and they're probably not all that happy, right? So then the first step is to like realize, wait a minute, you know, I've got free time. My purpose, my main purpose in life is to be as happy as possible. Let me do something that is going to really work really well. So, so then the idea would be that instead of watching four hours of TV, watch maybe three hours or three and a half hours. Spend half an hour that you wouldn't ordinarily spend devoting to happiness, practicing, getting in touch with that feeling, practicing, sitting down, understanding the feeling of happiness, writing about it. There, there, there are various techniques. We're, we're, we'll talk about some of them. But the idea is to just set, a, set a, um, aside time that one would ordinarily devote to things that don't work as well, you know, at, at becoming happier, and access happiness directly during those times. That's an excellent idea, and I, uh, I think when we do that, we sharpen our skill by uh, understanding that we're devoting time to this, and, and we, we can get more into the feeling of happiness and what it's doing for us. <coughs> I know for myself, um, I like to do some reading, especially in the morning. And what that does for me is it, it sort of puts me on the right track. And it not only puts me on the right track, but it connects me with my intention to be happy. And so right there and then, I start weeding out uh, the feelings that, that, I, that are useless to me. <laughs> and I start adopting and holding on to what I do want to feel. And I, and I start to, in a sense, Co uh, consciously understand what it is that I want to feel and I start feeling that I start going with that feeling and it, it, it's re it, and when I don't do that I think I'm not focused and I think I'm not uh, my intention isn't happiness and so I have a better chance of not experiencing happiness or uh, better situations in my life by not starting the day off with giving myself some practice towards happiness, and that's by, by becoming immersed in it. You know, whether it be through reading, thinking, uh, relaxing, meditating, uh, just uh, focusing on happiness, maybe a feeling, like I said before. But again, it's it's really a feeling that you get, and once you connect with that, that's part of this practice. And I and I and I think if we set up a certain kind of time for ourselves, it might be very beneficial. I know that is such an excellent point. Just the idea that. Um starting off our day with happiness, whether it's, it's reading about it or, you know, I, th I think reading about it is great because that, mm -hmm. that really gets us in, in touch with, like, its importance, its value, it, it's, it's, you know, the fact that it's the point of it. So, so I think uh, if we're going to practice happiness, starting, starting off our day with it, as, as you say, as you do, it sets off the, the rest of the day. And then, then we, we can talk about, like, well, all right, so our day has started with our focus, where it should be at, at, at um, you know, doing what we have, we have to do during the day, but not forgetting that our point, re regardless of what we do, is happiness. So then, um, so then, yeah, the, 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 the neck, the skill, the, the, the kind of sub-skill you were referring to, I guess, that's very important is focusing on happiness, because happiness is a feeling. It's, it's a feeling, and like, for example, there's some of us who aren't very, let's say, in touch with their feeling of anger. 
And so they're like therapists actually work with, with people to help them get in touch with it, understand it, express it, and all that. You know, and like happiness is a feeling too. There's some of us, I mean, the average level of happiness is 70%. We're happy about 54% of the time, which isn't that much probably because we're not as familiar as we could be with that feeling. So, so yeah, as, as you're saying, just getting in touch with it. So what, what does that uh, involve? Sitting down in a chair, sitting down or while driving or something, and just feeling it, just, you know, just mm -hmm. tuning out all the other distractions, tuning out mm -hmm. the other thoughts, the worries, the plans and all, and just focusing on that very essential, primal feeling of pleasure. Yes, and as I'm listening to you, I also realize that uh, where I have the opportunity, I listen to tapes, and as I'm driving, I'm also uh, able to, <laughs> I feel a lot better when I listen to tapes than I do the news, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and the other thing that I do is, if any, anybody's ever seen my desk, it's got a lot of happy stuff. So you can't come near my environment without thinking either this is a four-year-old who's never grown up or happiness is pretty important to this person. And it really reaffirms your purpose. I mean, you, if, you, if you forgot what your intention was, your environment can remind you of very quickly when you put happy things in your area. And not, not, so, that you're, not so that you can entertain two-year-olds if they come by, but, but it works, but so that you can r remember to practice what, you, what, you're, what we're preaching, at least what I'm preaching and, and George, what you're preaching. The other thing that uh, a guy named Barry from Canada sent in to me as an email. Uh, he said in his dashboard he puts a mirror image of, of some positive happiness statement and as he's driving he could see, he could read the image in his window of his car. So he's got constant reminders everywhere in his room, in his bathroom. I think that's great. The more we have uh, uh, life looking at us and reminding us to be happy, whether it's, you know, in our desktop, our watch, um, you know, our phone, you know, be happy now. The more we've got going to remind us to be happy, the more we'll practice it. That, that makes so much sense. And, and so like these reminders, I think, are an essential component of practicing happiness. Mm -hmm. You know, what we value and what we, would want, what we want to become better at, we will highlight in our lives. You know, like a piano sometimes will, will, will be the centerpiece of a room for a pianist. And, you know, like a, a tennis player might subscribe to all these tennis magazines and then be up on the latest, you know, rackets and all. So, yeah, definitely surrounding ourselves with these reminders are very important because, like, it's extremely important because, like, um, remembering to be happy is a skill. And what happens is, yeah, we go through our, our day, like, we might remind ourselves in the beginning of the day, you know, happiness is what, it, it's, what it's about and all, but then, you know, we'll, we'll get to work or we'll get, get with friends and our mind will be distracted to, to completing a cer certain project, to working on overcoming a certain problem, to doing this or the other, and all of a sudden, we've lost our focus. So, like, by having these constant reminders at home, at work, wherever mm -hmm. we are in the car, mm -hmm. then we can constantly, you know, remember our focus and, um, prevent ourselves from from constantly being distracted to these things that that simply aren't as important. You raise an excellent point, George, because then w when negative feelings present themselves, we don't have to react. We can, w it, or if actually we forget to be happy, we can remember again and catch ourselves. And and even if we're in a state of anger or um, uh, some other state, you know, uh, confusion or or stress, we can say, you know, I can let all that go and and practice my happiness because the truth is by being happy and practicing our happiness we're better able to deal with the stressors in life we're better able to deal with anger with people with tough situations you know it's so interesting that, that when things happen they've already happened and all we're left with is our reaction and that's what we're fighting we have to stop resisting what's happened as if our resistance is going to erase it. It happened already. You can't change it. But you're left with what you're going to do about it. And, and unhappiness is not working. It, it's the old school of looking at life. It does not work. Happiness does. I think you had a kind of an interesting story about a, from your TV uh, uh, with a Seinfeld episode about unhappiness that, you, that we were sharing. Yeah, well, actually, I'm going to save that for another show, because oh, okay. we're going to do a show on, like, oh, okay. how sometimes we idolize pain. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it, it's, it's a good, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a... Uh, I forgot which show we no, were going to use that for. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but, no, you raise a great point about, like, the negative feelings, because, like, uh -huh. if we're not 
experiencing happiness, we're definitely experiencing some degree of unhappiness. Yeah. And so as part of this practicing happiness, it is so important to be in touch, to be very aware of those times when, when we're not feeling as happy as we should, as we could. So, and so like the, the, the practice, the skill is to, to become aware of that and then instantly stop it. You know, I mean like say to, say to ourselves, wait a minute, you know, um, there's a worry that's, that, that, I'm, that I'm feeling that I shouldn't, there's an emotion, anger, sadness, whatever, shouldn't be feeling it, it's not necessary. And that skill of having that awareness and then deciding, wait, it's not necessary, is extremely important because that, that's another reminder. Every time we have an, an unpleasant emotion, we can remind ourselves, wait a minute, this isn't what my life is, in about, is about, this isn't what, what life in general is about. So that, th these negative emotions can be cues, you know, to, to just mm -hmm. set us in the right track again. E excellent point. I mean, and, and the more we practice this, uh, I, I believe, or, uh, well, I, I'm not even going to say the word belief. I know in my own life that uh, things like anger, things like disillusionment, uh, unhappiness, uh, situations that I that I would have preferred not to happen or be happening have actually gotten better as a result of being happy uh, you know at one point I would say um, how can that be but our reaction ends up being fuel for the fire <laughs> and so we take a bad situation and we you know in other words um, we have a um, uh, you know a the cow poops in the barn but when we get really mad about it, we burn the barn down. So then if we thought we had a problem with, with the cow doing something in the barn, our reaction is like destroying the barn. So the one thing we have total control of, the other we don't. And I think we have to learn that practicing happiness enables us to have total control of ourselves. Maybe not of everything, but ultimately it lends more and more control of things that we thought we had no control of. So our happiness ends up working for us. You know, it becomes the highway for things to work better on. People react to you less. Uh, you know, the, it's as simple as a person who's argumentative will have more arguments. <laughs> and a person who's happy will probably experience less, um, you know, uh, un uh, unhappy people because people realize that they're just not going to get the better of the person and uh, you know they may be left being right but the other person's certainly not going to become unhappy and so arguments are just not going to work so happiness works in correcting situations it really does yeah and, and I guess the the really good thing about that is that as we practice becoming happier we notice that the negative experiences and emotions in our life will decrease and mm -hmm. will continue de decreasing and so that we find that the more we practice happiness in the long run the less we end up having to practice it one because we have less to practice it, uh, less reason to practice it less uh, negative emotions mm -hmm. and two because it becomes habit agreed I, I, I agree with you about the <coughs> practice although the one thing I've, I have found is as human beings, we all need the reminders. And I think our show is a reminder. Um, if, if I may, I want to mention that you can check that uh, if you have, uh, uh, you know, uh, if you're online, uh, happinessclub.com. Uh, check that out, www.happinessclub.com. You can get a free newsletter and information. And um, uh, the, the reminders are important because if we, if we don't remember to do this, then, then we, we look as if happiness isn't working. Yet, it can't wor work unless we use it. Oh yeah. Um, in terms of, again uh, of techniques, I want to just talk about the the method that I introduced um, a while back, the Ortega happiness method. That's basically like three central components and then a fourth component that I'm still working with um, to understand and, and utilize. But the idea is first to value happiness. That that should be a practice. Like that um, a as we practice, as we practice reminding ourselves how important happiness is to our lives, to the lives of everyone around us, that'll set in, in motion just all our work to become happier and happier. So that's the first component. The second component is to smile as much as possible. And that smiling is uh, something that's more important when we don't feel like smiling than when we do. Because when we don't feel like smiling and we smile, it has a lot more power to, to influence our mood and, and just uplift us um, much more. But then 
the the the, um, the third part is probably the, the the foundation of the method, and and that's to to replace our thoughts. I mean, when it comes to practicing happiness, it a lot of it means practicing willing our own thoughts. And what I mean by that is like, you know, a lot of times we're just working on something or doing something or maybe not doing anything at all, but thoughts are coming into our mind, you know. And these thoughts, if we're lucky, they're pleasant or very pleasant. If we're less lucky, they're less pleasant. But we're actually relying on these thoughts and we don't know where they come from. They seem to come automatically, right? Right. So so the, 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 the centerpiece of my happiness meth method and the, the real um, centerpiece, I think, of practicing happiness is to replace those thoughts. Or I, I, I can't say it's the centerpiece because I think there's other ways. There's ways that are more visceral. But, but a way that's very effective is that rather than having these thoughts just control our moods and we don't know where they're coming from, and rather than relying on luck, we can just choose to practice saying to ourselves, I feel great, I feel wonderful, life is good, you know, life is getting better, I love my friends. Just these thoughts and like, you know, we don't even have to like, some, somebody might say, well, you know, I'm saying it, but I'm not feeling it. But with anyone, you practice this for a certain amount of time, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, after, uh, after a day, after a few weeks, you'll notice that the more you say it, the more you feel it, the more you believe it, and, and each time you say it and each time you believe it, the feeling gets stronger. And so it's, it's really a matter of just um, using that simple technique of replacing automatic thoughts with our self-willed thoughts to, one, move ourselves away from those negative thoughts, to take control of our thoughts, you know, to not have them be random in a sense, and two, to use this method to help us um, focus on, on that feeling of happiness as we were talking about before, because that, the feeling of happiness w is what happiness is all about. So, so again, this, um, that third component of my happiness method, I think, is an extremely powerful way to practice happiness, and it's simple because one can practice it anywhere, really. Anywhere that one has the time that, that one doesn't have to devote, let's say, to other tasks. Yes, I agree with you, George, and you bring up a very important point, and that is thinking. In fact, thinking is the primary reason that people become unhappy because it triggers, it, it triggers their emotions, it triggers their feeling, it triggers their state, physical, both physical and mental. And if you trace it back, you had this fleeting, uh, you know, thought that was negative. Like you say, where did it come from? We don't know, but yet it's controlling us. And so when we climb back into the seat of power and take control of the thoughts we're feeding us, that's an important first step. And uh, maybe another would be, you know, to get to the point where we're, we're not paying as much attention to those thoughts because we don't have to. We can pay more attention, as you say, to the feeling of happiness because then that would also enable better thoughts to come along and guide us towards what we want. So you raise some very good, definitely raise some great points. How, how about um, practicing? How should we, you know, when should we practice happiness? What's the best way to... to you know, remember to do it. Yeah, well, a lot of times, you know, like, if we're at work or with people sometimes, it's a bit more difficult. Um, mm -hmm. With people, it's a bit easier. Um, you know, we're like, um, kind of like moving toward a kind of an area that, um, that is less pleasant. Maybe a person is talking about their problems, about like the, the imperfections in the world and all. And, you know, in that sense, we can, we can reshift the conversation to more positive ways. But I think most of the practice, especially initially, would best be done when we have time, leisure time, when rather than watching TV, rather than, than um, listening to music, um, you know, rather than doing the kinds of things we ordinarily do that, you know, might make us happy but very often don't, have our activity be, you know, becoming happier. And so, like, so I guess, I guess for most people, the early mornings is, is the best time to start, as you were saying before, because that'll mm -hmm. set in motion the whole day. And then once we're out of work or during lunch, when we have free time, that's the best time, you know, whether it's five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just, just sitting down, getting in touch with that feeling. That's good, good advice. And uh, maybe going to bed with a better attitude would help too. You know, then you start the day and end the day with, you know, both sides of the uh, uh, equation. Um, now you've got some, you had, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of priming you in this, you had some uh, poetry that you thought could be appropriate. 
Yeah, well, this this is also related to the happiness method I was explaining. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, because I, I, I've been working with this, and sometimes I find that um, that saying to myself, I feel great, I feel wonderful mm -hmm. for a certain amount of time is not stimulating enough to my mind. My mind wants to do more. Mm -hmm. And so I was trying to think, well, what could I do? What kind of a technique or practice can I do to, to blend having these thoughts with more of a uh, stimulating activity. And so what I actually started doing was creating poems about the process of becoming happier. Poems where I would write about what I was doing in the present. Mm -hmm. And you know, they don't have to rhyme. You know, a lot of poetry right. nowadays doesn't right. rhyme. But just the idea of setting on paper um, one's thoughts and, and like, limiting oneself to very positive thoughts and to the process of understanding happiness and and connecting to the feeling it's a it's a wonderful way of of just giving substance and you know giving uh, kind of like parameters and uh, a real activity to to this practice yeah i like that because uh, giving you know what you're doing is you're you're understanding not only happiness better but you're understanding yourself better and what is happiness but understanding ourselves better really so writing it and being clearer about your thoughts and maybe even seeing it more clearly is a great idea that's really good yeah uh, we don't have much time left but I just wanted to focus again on what you were saying before about like eliminating thoughts because you know you you're working with this, this is a technique you're working it with mm -hmm. and I think it's extremely powerful it's I just wanted to mention that like in yoga yoga you know part yogic scriptures which go back you know thousands of years basically say that there is a state of, of bliss of mm -hmm. uh, even higher than bliss that that requires that one eliminate or minimize one's thoughts in other words the thoughts whether they're pleasant or whatever are sometimes um, limiters to our happiness Interesting. And right now, my thought is that we only have seconds left to the end of the show. Isn't that amazing? But George, uh, k kidding aside, you're right, but it's also interesting how much our thoughts lead us. And so we don't have freedom. We're, we're not in charge. It's, so, it's some outside force that's compelling us to act almost irrationally at times. And that's why happiness is, is very important. And practicing happiness is really one of the most important things of all because then you get to experience this for yourself. Well, it's that time again and uh, that's about all we have time for today. Thanks very much for watching. In the future, we'll explore other topics designed to help you enjoy your life. Be good, think well, think very happy, and I hope you'll join us next week on The Happiness Show. Happiness is powerful. It's our underlying need. Happiness is why we live each day Happiness is destiny So let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy